high value after oil. Um, this is never in the first world, brings lots of coffee in. Doesn't come from anywhere in the first world. Um, so, yeah, there are sort of distinctive regional characteristics. People, I've heard people say, and I'm not sure how true this is, that all coffee in Central America uh, descends from a single plant, or at least all Arabic coffee. Coffee actually differs. I mentioned this. There are three um, species of it. Um, Arabica is what makes the most interesting coffee. Most espresso is made with Arabica, and nicer places are use mostly Arabica. Um, and then there's Forestero and Robusta, which are um, more pest tolerant, produce higher yields, produce a lot more caffeine, um, but it's kind of bitter and boring. Um, and like uh, instant coffee is pure Robusta. Um, but it's the kind of thing where, where it's from does make a difference. Um, what ideally happens with coffee is a roaster gets green coffee and gradually roasts it over the course of a year. It lasts about two years, maybe. Um, and then you buy it right then, because um, coffee roasted after about a week is, loses a lot of flavor. And after about a month is actually when rancid is becoming like, it still is kind of recognizable as coffee, but it's actually becoming like a little bit toxic. So like, old coffee is bad. And this is a thing that's not all that commonly known. Like, Trevor Allen will, if you look at the things in the front of the shelf, they'll be likely to be gold, and that's fine. If you look at the things in the back of the shelf, they'll often be two months old. So, don't buy them. Uh, check the roast dates when you can see them. There are a lot of fairly different ways of making coffee, preparing it once you roasted it and ground it. The right thing you should do right away, right before you make it, and it wraps up about half an hour ago. Um, there is, did I write down a list? I'm going to write down a list. It's espresso, where you grind the coffee very fine, uh, into like a very fine kind of like flour texture, um, and then put very heavily pressured water for it. It's not steam, just pressured water. Um, and usually you don't use very much water. Um, if you use a lot of water to make espresso, you might have more powder. There's drip coffee, you probably have all seen that, in either a machine or a cone. Grind it medium fine, uh, pour hot water over it. Um, French press, which I'll be demoing, and um, Turkish coffee, where you grind it into dust. It's like you, most grinders can't make Turkish coffee. The way I've heard it recommended is you get a plastic bag and a hammer, uh, and then hit it for like 20 minutes. Um, and then that actually just dissolves into water. It's sort of like making it some coffee for coffee. Um, but it's very sludgy. Uh, it's often done with carbon. There's mocha pot, which you guys have probably seen these sort of weird, uh, like, curvy metal things that we set on the stove. It's sort of like espresso. The steam builds up at the bottom, presses the boiling water under the steam through a tube into a middle section, which has compressed coffee and nothing to the top of it. It's like espresso, but it cooks a little hotter, it's a little more bitter. Um, coffee also, you want it much closer to boiling, but the exact temperature does make some difference. The French press, like exactly boiling water, like um, So, French press. Um, very simple. Probably can figure out how it works. Um, it's the coarsest grind you'll commonly use in any sort of modern way of making coffee. Um, I've heard it described as Santa Cruz sand as opposed to caramel sand, so kind of a little bit crunchy, gravelly. Um, I just eyeballed the amount that's enough for like a third of the press. Um, grab just a little bit of cool water. This is incredible. Yeah, what you do is you pour on hot water. Um, as soon as you can, stir it around. Um, if the coffee is fresh, this is sort of a good indicator if it's fresh, it'll produce what's called crema, which is just a sort of oily uh, tan colored foam. I hope you guys can see that. It's tan colored foam. This coffee is like what we call it too. It's only kind of good. Otherwise, it could be, it could look like a Guinness or kind of produce like a semi Good thing. Um, stir it around. Let it sit for about three minutes. Um, actually, I've heard people say, like, don't let it sit for less than two minutes and 50 seconds, or, or I mean, more than two minutes. Yeah. It's a pretty narrow window. Um, yeah, look at the clock. I remember what it I've heard it recommended to stir it again towards the end. I've also heard it recommended not to use metal. I'm not actually sure. I've heard some people say that's because it ruins the taste of the coffee. Some people say it's likely to produce cracks which will spread with the temperature changes. I think it's probably the latter. My last French press started leaking and got aggressively leaky after a while. 
um, so now I'm seeing the content. Um, what else is there to say about Um, cupping, I don't, this is not really relevant to like one's general conception of coffee, but it's amusing. Um, the way that, um, the way that coffee roasting companies or coffee bean distributors decide sort of what they want to do with the bean is they take it, they roast it at five different degrees of, of roastedness, so like from sort of like very light to very dark, um, and then they grind it at like ten different degrees of fineness. And they simultaneously make all these types of coffee using things similar to a drip method, um, but it's all I, in between drip and turkey coffee. It's kind of a weird method of coffee. And you get this table about this big that's just covered full of cups of coffee. And they very rapidly drink all of them. You usually spit most of it out. Um, but it's like. Uh, and sort of just find the single optima um, and then make some more of that and get it recorded. Um, how long do you want to roast coffee? Assuming that you are roasting it, which you probably aren't. Um, well, you can. You can do it with the skillet. Um, depends both on, a lot, on what the bean is and what you want to do with it. Um, for espresso, you want kind of a medium light roast. For up to most things, the medium right light roast is going to taste good, which is why there's no such thing as an espresso bean. Like the term chocolate covered espresso beans is a weird marketing idea. They're coffee beans. Um, French roast is when you cook the coffee until it is charred all the way through. So, like, if you take anything resembling a coffee bean and French roast, it'll taste like French roast, and unlike kind of anything else. Um, Lay the around for a minute. Um, oh shit, this has been seeding for a long time. Actually, wow, it is very um, This is more intense than ever before. No, that, that was all coffee. That was all tea. I just poured tea. Yes, it was tea. That, that, that was the floor that I left steep the second time. Alright, ready? Um, it's generally a bad idea to let coffee sit in the French press because it doesn't really stop steaming, especially when you don't fill it all the way, because the crown is still of water, but not moving around as much. So, as soon as you guys are done with that, and you can wash your cups, I will pour some of this. It's um, It's like this is. I don't really remember in retrospect why I decided to do a demo with a French press. It's kind of silly because you guys have all had coffee. Um, <laughs> demos really are awesome. And, like, and I was missing. planning. I was planning originally to buy like some interesting Ethiopian single origin or something, so you could say like, okay, this is what Ethiopian coffee tastes like. By the way, blueberries. You sip Ethiopian coffee very quickly and blow the air around, it tastes like blueberries. It's really <laughs> weird. And just like normally, you don't notice that. Um, yeah, Ethiopian coffee. That's so, nice. They have some down at Yeah, the, um, the student-run coffee shops do it. Um, I have mixed feelings about Metropolis. They're the roaster that the student-run shops buy from. Um, they they get really interesting coffees, and they're kind of competent, but they um, they aren't consistent. So the same like the same labeled coffee, very 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 different. They also don't always label. Um, oh. They don't always label for roast date, so sip, sip, sip. Um, so you can get, like, a lot of times the stuff you get at a coffee shop that serves this stuff is really stale. It's stale. Um, yeah, that's, that's a sort of boring one. If it were Ethiopian, it would be great. If it were um, Brazilian, it would taste like lemons. And I'm serious, like, if you made it better than I did, it would really be like, wow, that's kind of like.